Good morning, everybody. Why don't we all stand and get our praise on this morning on this fabulous Father's Day. Amen. You know, we were talking just earlier that for the believer, every day is Father's Day. Amen. Because how many of you know, regarding our Father in heaven, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's give him a shout of praise. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We worship you this morning, God. Here we go. Let's turn it up. You are here. As we lift you up, you are riding on our praise. Being thrown over everything you are seated in. Let's sing that again. Verse 1. You are here. As we lift you up, you are riding on our praise. This is prophetic, I can feel it in the air. We lift our praise and you change the atmosphere. With hearts open now, everybody sing it out. Oh, 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 turn it up. Turn it up, this sound of praise. Make it louder than any other. Lift him up and shout his name. Broken chains, prison doors are giving way. This is prophetic. This is prophetic. I can feel it in the air. We lift our praise and you change the atmosphere. With hearts open now, everybody sing it out. Oh, oh, oh. Turn it up. This sound of praise. Make it louder than any other. Truly sets us free. 
God. Here we go. I'm not going to live. I'm not going to live by what I see. Not the five senses, amen, but by faith. I'm not going to live by what I feel. Deep down, well, deep down, I know that you're here with me. And I know that you can do anything. Yeah, through you, I can do anything. Yes, I can. impossible through you blind eyes are open and strongholds are broken and I'm living by faith nothing is impossible hallelujah do you praise him this morning let's sing I believe I believe
with praise enter his courts with thanksgiving in our hearts and enter his courts with praise amen there's a reason for that because what it does is it brings back to memory the goodness of God it brings back to our memory as worshipers why it is we worship in other words don't miss anything believer everything that I do for you recognize that Have eyes to see and have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying here this morning. Amen. There's something to be said about entering into your presence, God, with thanksgiving in our hearts and entering your courts. We praise you this morning, God. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We adore you. Do you adore him this morning? Embrace him in the spirit. Even as you would hug a loved one, just hug on him. Right now. Right where you're at. Hug on him. For he is hugging you right now oh yes embrace him child of God is all
A thousand stories of war. Yes. They think you're like a tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased.
Giants 
ladies right in here, will you just reach out your hand towards this young lady right here? There's something going on that the Lord is, is dealing with her. Please just encourage her. Give her support. Please just put your hand out there towards her. Everyone, thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. The Lord says to you, young lady, that your purity of worship brings down the purity of his love. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He is so good. It is so good to be here this morning with family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome, you family. That is awesome. You've got an awesome family. You love the Lord, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. This is awesome. You know, it's a special day. I understand that. It's the Lord's day. <laughs> it's the Lord's day. Well, I better get on with it here. He's got it all written down for me. <laughs> Greet each other, will you? Hug a neck. Happy Father's Day to each and every one of you. be seated don't you know you're spreading COVID <laughs> sorry he meant love <laughs> maybe this will go on TV and the pastor he'll have to explain what I just said <laughs> Welcome, all you visitors. If you're wanting to know who I am, I guess I'm the old clown of the house. <laughs> we got a couple of special visitors here. I'm not sure if they're believers or not, but they're up front row. I pray that the ones that run them are believers running these things. That's pretty awesome. In front of each and every one of you there, there should be a blue card. It's a visitor's card. It's a welcome card. Would you please take time to fill that out for us? And at the end of the service, you may go right through those doors to the service desk. And get to spin the wheel of fortune to see what happens. <laughs> oh. Hopefully you don't spin the wheel of fortune to see what happens when you go to the Lord each day. Lord, are you going to be there or not? 
What do I get to that? See, Leah, I can smile. You bring it out in me, I'm telling you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Well, there's something up here about an announcement. If I don't, if I don't point this out, I lose this high-paying job I'm doing. <laughs> I lose all the benefits and everything. Registration is open. You can register on the app. Supernatural Kids VBS. You know, when I was raising our children, my wife and I was raising our children, I'm telling you what, you had to be a super mom and dad every day. It just didn't wait for one week of the summer. My wife, she's a super mom, I'm telling you. She's a super wife. She's just a super person. I get to say that, I've got the mic. Now, when you get the mic, you can say something. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, that's the one big announcement. I can't say more than three. That's one, so that's worth stopping there. I want to get serious just for a minute, and if we can, I want to thank each and every one of you for being obedient. for being the lover of his commandments, for being the love, for being in love with him and for being in love with his word. That we have been blessed over the years with such an awesome campus. Mortgage free. That's a blessing. Many folks here in the valley, they just can't say that. We have found favor with God, and it's because of your obedience. So I just want to thank you this morning for sharing your time your talents and your resources and we all know they're his to begin with but he gives them back to us that we may share them so thank you from all the leadership of the house thank you there are four different ways that you can give person mobile website text and to me. Oh. Where's that at? <laughs> no, I don't know. Okay. Let's pray. Enough's enough. Pastor says, please. Where's the sheep book? And that's the way they used to do. <laughs> Father, we just thank you this morning. Thank you for the joy. Thank you, Father, that we can laugh and enjoy, Father, your marvelous love today. You're awesome, Father, in every aspect of our lives. Father, release those that may be in bondage today, Father, by them believing that you're a living God. that you're a pure God, a pure heart, a pure love. And Father, you have the only hope for mankind today. Thank you for every family. I just pray blessings, Father. I pray surprises, promotions, I pray, Father, for health. Health in the mind, health in the body, 
of those, Father, that couldn't attend this morning. Those that may be in the hospital, that may be, Father, in bed. As it was spoken, Father, this morning in pre-service prayer, your arm is not shortened, Lord, by circumstances. So we thank you. We love you. Father, we sit in your presence this morning as your word comes forth for correction, for strategy, for food to nourish our spirits, that, Father, that we may be changed, that we may not leave here this morning as we came in, that your word will wash, Father. That we bring, Father, before you our needs. It says to bring them before you. The foot of the cross, I'm laying there. The precious blood of Christ Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, this morning. Amen. Children, you are dismissed. Oh. Amen. Ron, you are super as well. You're a super dad. You're super funny, too. I, it's rare that we see that. So that's pretty awesome. Well, good morning, everybody. Happy Father's Day. Uh, it's an awesome, awesome day. Um, not because I'm a dad, but uh, because we get to celebrate our, our Heavenly Father this morning, and uh, as well as our earthly fathers. And uh, I want to thank... Uh, Bill Davis and Glenn Wright for carting these magnificent machines in here. Uh, they are truly amazing and uh, cost a lot. <laughs> uh, but uh, Glenn is, uh, he's the president of CMA. There's Glenn back there. Raise your hand, Glenn. There you go. CMA, Christian Motorcycles Association, Motorcyclists Association. And uh, they do a lot of rides, uh, you know, for great causes, um, bless bikes, uh, they bless people who ride them, uh, they share the love of Jesus um, wherever they go, and it's a great organization, and I'm so glad to, that many of them, or some of them, are a part of this, this house and this family. So uh, thanks for, for sharing. I, I did ask Glenn uh, this morning, I said, why do you ride? And, um, you know, I had some things in my notes here about motorcycles and about riding, but I personally don't ride. I ride an e-bike. Does that count? <laughs> it's the same wind, right? I mean, I, you know, I feel pretty good when I'm passing that one guy going up the hill, you know, and it's like, oh, he's like in low gear, and I'm just like, eee. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's, it's not the same. I know that. But I did ask Glenn, you know, what is it? What is it about riding a motorcycle? What is it about riding out there on the open road? And so my, no my notes really said, you know, it, it uh, expresses uh, really a freedom and an intimacy with the road because you've really got to pay attention to where you're riding. And when I asked Glenn about that, he took it one step further and he said, really, it's an, it, when he rides and he goes out in the open road, especially if he's by himself, it's about an intimacy with the Father. It's about an intimacy with uh, the Heavenly Father in a way that he can see nature, he can see God's creation, he can see all of what God is, has uh, prepared for him to, to ride through, and it just helps him really meditate and get closer uh, closer to the Lord and closer to the heart of God. And so I, this morning, what my prayer is, is that through this word this morning, not only dads, but really everyone here uh, will be able to 
to experience um, really just some aspects of the Father that really would set you free, experience freedom, and also that you would just be a little closer to the heart of God this morning. That the intimacy of the Father would be something that, that you experience here through the Word this morning. You see, we have a Father uh, who wants a relationship uh, with us that, that is ever-growing and ever-evolving uh, and ever-getting uh, uh, more intimate as the days go by. And He wants to, to give us even more than what we've experienced so far. So today we'll briefly touch on who the Father is, what he gave us, what he wants to give us. We'll also pray over all the dads today. Do we have dads in the house? We got some, yes. We'll pray over all the dads today and we'll challenge uh, everyone to uh, be dispensers of his nature uh, and his glory. You know, the Father uh, is often uh, been called uh, the Father of glory and Uh, It's in that glory that he expresses his love, and today the love of the Father really is all about his glory, and we're going to kind of unpack that and and see what that's really all about, and it's a a prayer today for all of us uh, in Ephesians chapter 1 that Paul wrote out a prayer, and it's a prayer for all of us today, but especially uh, to dad. So as we read through this, uh, as we go through this this morning, I just challenge every dad, every earthly father really to take it in. I challenge the rest of you to take this in and in, in, in lo- listen to this prayer as we, as we begin this morning, and then we're going to pray again. Uh, it's found in Ephesians chapter 1, uh, and we'll start with verse 17. It says, I pray, this is Paul writing to the Ephesians, I pray that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, would impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation to know him through your deepening intimacy with him. Father, we just thank you for your word this morning. We thank you, God, for uh, your presence here in and through us, God. We just uh, give this time, this next, these next moments to you, Lord. You are a good, good father. As we sang today, you're a good, good father. And we just give this time to you. Let your, let your word speak to our hearts this morning. Jesus, we thank you. We love you. We give this time to you. In your name we pray. Amen. And amen. There's a book that I really would recommend that you get your hands on. It's, it's by Gary Waynes. It's a, uh, he's also the author of uh, Bridal Intercession. And the book is called Come to Papa. And uh, you might want to, to try to find this book. Um, you could probably get it on Amazon. Um, it's Encountering the Father that Jesus knew. And I'm going to take a few things from here, uh, from this book this morning, and, and share those with you. And the first one is this, and, and that is that the Father of glory, it says, I pray that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, would impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation, to know, to know him. That know there, the word there really in in, in the Greek really speaks about an intimate knowing. The Father of glory wants to know you with a deepening uh, intimacy. And the glory of God or the Father's glory is a term, uh, as he describes in the book, a term used to communicate the unspeakable aspects of God's beauty, majesty, and in power. Many times we've said that the glory of God is the nature of Jesus Christ clearly seen or clearly on display uh, in a life. And so you can kind of start to get the meaning of what the glory of God is. Um, Moses uh, in the Old Testament cried out to God, God, show me your glory, he said. And uh, we're going to read a little bit of that. I've got a lot of scripture for you this morning, so we're going to pour through this. Exodus 34, 5 through 9. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood there with him, uh, talking about Moses, as he called upon the name of the Lord. Then the Lord passed by in front of him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in faith, faithfulness and truth, who keeps faithfulness for thousands, who forgives wrongdoing 
violation of his law and sin, yet he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished, inflicting the punishment of fathers on the children and on the grandchildren to the third and fourth generations. And Moses hurried, when Moses heard, uh, heard this, it says that Moses hurried to bow low toward the ground and worship. And then he said, if in any way I have found favor in your sight, Lord, please, May the Lord go along in our midst, even though the people are so obstinate or stiff-necked and pardon our wrongdoing and our sin and take us. This is the most important phrase of the entire excerpt here is take us as your own possession. You see, Moses concluded that God's glory was intended to be all of his aspects reflected in a people that belong to God. You see, the people, the people that he dwelled in and through, that he dwelled in, in, in amidst of them were his inheritance. And in Ephesians, back to the New Testament, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, uh, it says this, that Paul is also continuing on to pray. And he says, I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling. That is the wealth of God's glorious inheritances that he finds in us his holy ones. How many of you got up this morning and you woke up by your alarm clock this morning and you said, I am the inheritance of God? Yeah, not me. I woke up and said, it's Father's Day. I wonder if I get donuts. Yes. I don't know that any of us go around, you know, thinking that often that we're the inheritance of God, that we belong to him. We are his inheritance. But Paul writes that Moses understood that. And Paul writes that we would experience it. It's been said that children are an inheritance, and that's true. But in a much higher way, we are his children, his creation, we are his inheritance. Why does God Almighty, the creator of the universe, even need an inheritance? Everything is his. All that exists is is his. All that was, all that is, all that is to come exists in him. Why does he need an inheritance? Oh. Did you know, believer, did you know, child of God, that you existed in him before the foundation of the earth? That he thinks so highly of you. He thinks so that you're so important and valuable to him. You're the apple of his eye. He loves you so much to make you his inheritance. In other words, you are his inheritance. He is yours, and you were created and destined to be a reflection and display of his glory in every aspect in your life. You know, as we uh, journey through this life, especially uh, dads, I'm speaking to you right now, especially uh, this is... This is happening in all, the, all who believe in him, all that believe, uh, all that live in his, in his spirit. It's true that, every, uh, that of every earthly father as we encounter him and experience his, his presence that you become a reflection of the very thing that you're experiencing, of the very one that you are encountering. Fathers today, our cry should be, show us your glory Oh, God. It's that important as dads today. You see, the world says that there is a fatherless world being brought up, but I'm here to tell you that there has always been a heavenly father. Yes, sometimes uh, earthly dads, sometimes they miss the mark. Sometimes they fall short. Sometimes they go astray. But God never does that. His, he is a heavenly father that is always consistently loving us. He said he would never leave us or forsake us. But today, our, our, as earthly fathers, our cry should be, show us your glory and with humble hearts, make ourselves available 
to encounter his very heart and experience all the aspects of his glory. I just pray this morning, God, may your light illuminate us to see the need for your glory to be seen in and through us today. We are your inheritance, called out of darkness and into a marvelous light. Paul continued to write as he prayed, and I want to just uh, keep reading through here in, in Ephesians chapter 1. It says, I pray that you will continually experience, continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. Then your lives, then your lives will be an advertisement of this immense power as it works through you. This is the mighty power uh, in verse 20 that was released when God raised Christ from the dead and exalted him to the place of the highest honor and supreme authority in the heavenly realm. You see, from this scripture, we can, we can get that we are a display of his nature. I think for every dad, you are a dad with an ad. This one's for Andy. You're a dadvertisement. He's not here today, but I know he's going to love that one, right? Corny puns. <laughs> Just like him, he posted something, I think, this morning or last night. It was just his corny puns about dads, about Father's Day. He's, he's awesome at that. But you're a dad advertisement. You're a dad with an ad. What is it that you're advertising, dad? What is it that's on the billboard that screams out to all that pass by your life? What is it that comes on that infomercial late at night? <laughs> and that's not all. What is it that we're advertising? Man, I'm preaching to myself here. You see, to be good stewards as his inheritance is to be an ad of his glory or the aspects of his glory, and we are to continually experience his presence as it works in our hearts. Jesus showed us, Jesus showed us the way. Jesus showed us the love of the Father. The disciples said, Jesus, show us the Father. Show us what he's like. Show. And Jesus said to his disciples, if you've seen me, You've seen the Father. And the Bible says, or the Word says, that, that Jesus told his disciples that he did everything out of the initiatives of the Father, meaning that he was so in tune and so intimate with the Heavenly Father that everything he said, everything he did, everywhere he walked was by the initiative or by direction of the Father himself. So when his disciples asked Show us the Father. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He was showing them the aspects and glory of the Father through his very life and through his very walk and through every word that he said. Dads, you're a dad advertisement. You're a dad. It's an ad. Jesus showed off the aspects of the Father. And uh, in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3, just the first part of the scripture, a couple different translations here. Uh, the Son is the light of God's glory and the imprint of God's being. In the NIV, the Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. And then in the Passion, it says this, the sun is the dazzling radiance of God's splendor, the exact expression of God's true nature, his mirror image. You see, Jesus was to love humanity so much that he was willing to give his life in humility. The Bible says that he was obedient to the Father even unto the death of the cross. 
Our mission today is to love and give of ourselves in a way that the aspects are the, of the Father are radiant and dazzling to the world who needs to see something positive. Can you say amen to that? Dads. I didn't wake up this morning thinking, I am to be dazzling and radiant. I think if, I, if this was Mother's Day, I could say, hey, you know what? I think you woke up saying, I've got to go to church, dazzling and radiant. <laughs> you know, it was said to me this morning that when we do donuts for Mother's Day, they're in this nice little three-tiered thing, and there's decorations, and there's, <laughs> there's like, you know, confetti and all kinds of stuff. And when we do donuts for dads, we just throw the boxes on a table. And then I, then I told them, look, they're, they're not Father's Day donuts until you roll them on the floor a little bit. <laughs> Brush them off and just... <laughs> there were not supposed to be donuts with sprinkles. It just kind of happened. <laughs> oh. Dads, Listen. Our primary job, your primary job is to love with dazzling radiance. Oh, how the Father has loved us the same. Oh, how the Father has loved us the same. Jesus was an exact representation. It was Jesus who made a way for us to know the love of the Father. And in that darkest, dankest moment, Jesus comes into your life. God the Father comes into that moment in a dazzling radiance to say, you are worthy, I value you, I love you enough to have given my Son It's with dazzling radiance that the Father has loved us. Dads, earthly dads, our primary job is to love the same way. Those of us who are earthly fathers that have kiddos, I still call them kiddos even though they're in their 20s. one of the hardest things to do is to love consistently and unconditionally like Jesus and like God loved us. But that's what we're called to do. I tell many people, I tell many people this, look, when your kids get older, it's like, you know, uh, especially when they become a little bit smarter than you. Your job is to love them, support them. Yeah, Elisha's a little smarter than me. <laughs> and I'll tell you that it's so important, such an important thing. If you get anything out of today, dads, your job is to love with so much radiance of the aspects of his glory. You know, when speaking of his aspects, Really, there are so, so many, and, and, and Gary Weins in his book outlines so many of them so well. He goes through all the aspects of the Father, and there's, this, this could be, uh, I mean, I think, Janine, you've read this book. I mean, this could be like three months of preaching here. And he outlines from a searching father seeking the lost to one that is loving with an embrace of healing and restoration to the forgiving, nurturing, and accepting and welcoming father he outlines in there uh, to the loving disciplinary father uh, that loves us so much that he'll keep working in our lives to bring us to the fullness of Jesus' nature. There's so much there. But this morning, and, and kind of uh, really going through the end of this there, I want to outline the aspect of, uh, of a giving father. A father who gave. You see, because he is a generous God. 
He's a generous God. God has a willing generosity. How much, how much has he given us? How much has he given us? You know, I'm going to take you through five different areas here that show God's willing generosity. And the first one is not just his son, but his only son. His only son. If we read the scripture, it says this in Romans 8, 31 through 32. So what does this all mean? If God has determined to stand with us, tell me who then could ever stand against us? For God has proved his love by giving us his greatest treasure. How many of you have a greatest treasure? Many of you have a safe in your home. Sometimes that material thing that's your greatest treasure, you put it in there. For Lisa, it's pictures of the family. How do I know these are going to be around for a long time? How do I know we're... Well, put them in the safe, dear. They're going to be like protected there it's a fire safe but god if he had a if he had a safe in heaven if he had a a vault in heaven where he kept all the treasures and he kept his greatest treasure he opened up the vault and he sent his greatest treasure that is the, his only son because he was thinking of you Only he had the combination. Only he could do that. And it says here that he gave us his greatest treasure, the gift of his son. And since God freely offered him up as the sacrifice for us all, he certainly, he surely, he without fail, he will certainly, won't, Hold, withhold from us anything else he has to give. If he offered up his son, everything that he's promised, he will give to you. He is a generous, generous God. What else did he give us? Well, that should be enough. That should be where it's like, that should be enough for all of us to have so much, be full of so much faith and to live this life. But he didn't stop there. He gave us his spirit as well. Not only did he give us his son, but he gave us his spirit. Jesus told his disciples in in John chapter 16 and verse 7, but I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I'm leaving. He's talking about him leaving physically. For if I do not leave the helper or divine encourager, I added that in from, a, 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 from the uh, Passion Translation, uh, the helper, divine encourager, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Not only did, did the Father give us his Son, but he also gave us his Spirit. And that Spirit came, and that Spirit filled us, and that Spirit is upon us, and that Spirit is in us, and that Spirit is all around us, and that Spirit is be, uh, before us, behind us, beside us. It is everywhere. And it's for us. He's the helper, the comforter the encourager, the, the affirmer, all of those things. You know, last week, we, had a, uh, we talked about meditation and we talked about uh, meditating and journaling and, and uh, many of you went and, and, and practiced that this week and I think that's uh, incredibly awesome. And I'll tell you that uh, many of you have received words directly from the Lord just in the way that we described it would happen and uh, you know, uh, this morning, uh, one of our dear, dear beloved here, Rosalie, uh, handed this to me and said, this is what the Lord uh, is, is said to me in the, 
and, I be, and she said, when I wrote this down, I just began to weep. And, and I said, sometimes you just got to hear it. You know, you read it. Sometimes you hear a preacher talking about it. Sometimes you hear a teacher or a pastor talking about how much God loves you. But when you hear it yourself from within, the Spirit of God is just affirming to you something awesome happens. It takes further a transformation that is taking place in your heart. And that transformation is one that is a journey of displaying all the aspects of who he is. You were destined for that. And she wrote this down. It says, I love you. You are my beloved. I give you a hope for the future. I'm taking care of you. How many people here this morning are stressed out about how they're going to take care of this or that or the, or the things and the circumstances of life? God is here. The Spirit is here to tell you, I will take care of you. Be of good cheer. He's overcome the world. It says, your mantle is to love me. I go before you. I go beside you. I lead you. I guide you. I am always with you. And then it says, I have seen your tears. And they are close to my heart. How precious is that? How precious is it that the Father, that the Father would speak by the Spirit of God that he has sent and filled us with in such a way. He's given us his Son. He's given us his Spirit. He's given us his mercy. Isaiah 55.3 says, Incline your ear and come to me. Listen that you may, li you may live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you according to the faithful mercies shown to David. God is, is in a, desires a relationship, desires a communion with you where his mercies Endure where his mercies are everlasting, where his mercy is always afforded to you. You know, one translation says, according to the sure mercies shown to David. There's nothing more sure than God's mercy expressed to you. In fact, Dads, he's said this about you many times. When I pray, I pray this because, and this is just in the last couple of years, I, I pray that, that God's, uh, that I just thank him for his mercy and also his goodness and his loving kindness that follow us all the days of our life. You see, Dad, you may not, you may not know, uh, you know what the future holds, but what I can tell you is this, that as the psalmist wrote this, that surely, just like those sure mercies that he wants to show you, surely goodness and loving kindness or love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What a promise. What a promise. Everyone hold on to that promise. Dads, hold on to that promise. He's giving you his mercy, his goodness, his loving kindness. Man, God is good, right? He's a good, good father. He's given us his son, his spirit. He's given us all his mercy, his goodness, his loving kindness. He doesn't stop there. There's more. Say there's more. <laughs> In Christ, there's always more. What else? He's given us his kingdom. 
He's given us his kingdom and all of that represents in the Holy Ghost righteousness, peace, and joy afforded into our lives, imputed into our lives by his son, Jesus Christ. He has given us the keys to the kingdom. Uh, Jesus uh, said this, so don't ever be afraid, dearest friends. Your loving father joyously gives you his kingdom with all its promises. Not only do we get to, be, to come into the kingdom, but he gives us the kingdom. And then he says, take my kingdom and give it away. Oh, man. Dads, are you feeling a little bit of charge here? Do you feel like jump, jumping up, running under this motorcycle and going out and running out, driving it right out? I know, we're going to raffle these in a minute, but... but there's only two tickets and Glenn and Bill have the tickets. That's not a part of the kingdom that he's giving you, right? <laughs> but he gave us the keys. He gave us all of that. There's a great emoji. It's a me emoji and it shows me with my head blowing up. I rarely use it. I should have used it today. It's like, poof. Our loving Father has given us, joyously given us, his kingdom and all its promises. So much there, so much there to, uh, that we could spend hours and hours on what that means. Just take that principle. And the final one here as we close out is this. His glory. This is kind of where we started. His glory. He's given us his glory. You know, in Second Peter, Peter writes uh, this, and we're going to read uh, uh, a couple of verses here in, in Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. There we go. Dads, take a look at this. Everything we could ever need for life and godliness has already been deposited in us by his divine power. Everything. Gave us his son, gave us his spirit, gave us his mercy, gave us his kingdom, and now he's saying everything that we ever could need for life and godliness is deposited in us. For all this was lavished upon us through the rich experience of knowing him who has called us by name and invited us to come to him through a glorious manifestation of his goodness. As a result of this, as a result of this, he has given you magnificent promises that are beyond all price. You can't buy these. You can't earn these. So that through the power of these tremendous promises, and here's kind of the, the punchline of this. Through the power of these tremendous promises, we can experience partnership. One translation says that we're partakers. And I love this, where it says we can experience partnership with the divine nature by which you have escaped the corrupt desires that are of the world. His glory is, as we said, all the aspects of who he is. It's his nature clearly seen in our life. And we have a partnership in that glory. We have a partnership in that divine nature. This scripture tells us what it tells us, dads, is that you're destined to be not just a dazzling advertisement, but that you are to be a dispenser, a conduit of his very aspects of glory. 
It's like someone calling you up and just saying, hey, would you like to partner with me in this venture? Really? Well, the first thing that comes to our mind is WIFM. That's an acronym for what's in it for me. It's not our attitude, I know that. When God just says this, when he calls us up and says, I want you to have a partnership in my glory and my divine nature that you are to be a representation of me in the earth and of my kingdom. Rarely do we think with him. Rarely do we ever. We shouldn't. But our posture is one of humility. One of them, how can this be? How can this be? I'm a partner with God. I'm a partaker of his divine nature. You see, he did all this because he gave us his son. He gave us his spirit. He gave us his mercy. He gave us his kingdom. And he's given you his glory. He called us out of darkness into his marvelous light that we could be radiant examples of who he is, reflections of who he is. Dads, this is my prayer for you. Just like Paul prayed that you would just be illuminated by his word this morning. That you would just be affirmed and encouraged by his word this morning. You play such an important role. Such an important role in the kingdom. Vance, if you could come up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Father of glory has He has shown us who He is. He has given us so much as a generous God or a generous Father. Son, his spirit, his mercy, his kingdom, his glory in nature. Our challenge this morning is what are we surely giving those for who we are stewards of in this life? Parents, dads, spiritual moms, spiritual fathers, grandparents, pretty much encompasses all of us. What are we dispensing to those who God has entrusted on this earth? To those who cross our paths, to those that we interact with, those that come close to us. What are we dispensing to those? You know, just like these motorcycles here, he's provided a vehicle or a way to experience freedom and intimacy with him. I would just say this. Don't take it for granted. Don't take it lightly. But rather, recommit. Press in. Dig in a little deeper. Crank that Turnbuckle, that's a dad thing, you know. Dads will know what I'm talking about. Crank that turnbuckle, get it a little tighter, get in tight. The Father who loves you so, so much. At this time, I'd like all the dads to stand up. If you're a dad, stand up this morning.
promise I won't have you standing long. saying to you you don't have to carry it all I know that's a dad thing you gotta fix everything you want to fix everything You want to carry that. You want to carry it with you. But God is saying, the Heavenly Father is saying, you don't have to do that. Cast that upon me, he says. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. He would also say, Stop looking for the light at the end of that tunnel. Stop looking for, I know that's a, that's a term, it's like just don't give up, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I'm here to tell you this morning that that light in the tunnel is you. He is the light in you. You illuminate wherever you go, his love his compassion as long as you let him. Yeah, life has those tunnels. Life has those times. He wants you to know he's ready. Give him the time because he's ready. He's ready to express himself in your life in a way that's never, never experienced. Jesus, thank you for these dads. Thank you for their hearts on this Father's Day to come into this place, this gathering, to make a commitment to be here, to worship you, to consecrate themselves to you, Jesus. Thank you for their hearts. Thank you for their love for you. God, I pray a special blessing upon them that you would illuminate their hearts in such a way in the coming days and the months that they would experience what you have put upon them this this morning. That the Father of glory, their Father, shine through their lives to their children, to their family, to their workplace their friends to their partners in hunting and fishing and sports and all the things that they do God that you would just dazzle through them they would be a conduit of love your perfect love we thank you for that in Jesus wonderful mighty name Amen and amen. Can we just give the dads a hand here? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for, uh, stay standing, stay standing. Okay, uh, ushers have a gift for you guys. And uh, it's not a donut. So they're going to just be standing up here. We're going to we're going to dismiss this morning, but uh, dad, if you want a gift, which I'm sure you do. This is a really good one. Very practical, very useful. And uh, we want you to have this as show our love to you. So as soon as we're dismissed, you can come right up and and get your gift. Um, I just want to thank you for being here this morning. This is been such a such a special morning and you know we're getting ready for VBS you can see some of the decor starting to pop up here it's going to be an awesome awesome week uh, 
it's all about the kids. It's all about the children. And uh, we invite you to uh, absolutely um, register your kids, bring them, come, volunteer. We really still have room for volunteers. Um, be a part of the kids and what's going on this whole week. It's going to be a, an awesome week. So uh, be praying for that. I just ask you to pray for, for that. And we're going to culminate that next week. Uh, Charlie is going to be sharing a word next week and giving some prophetic words. Uh, just an awesome time in the Lord. And uh, we'll, we're also going to be praying over the Euchers as they get ready uh, to launch out to Texas. And so uh, it's going to be a special Sunday, and we, we want to invite you back and, uh, and have you be a part of what's happening here. So uh, thank you for being here. Uh, go ahead and stand up, everyone. I know everybody's just sitting there. Uh, yeah, that's all I'm doing. Uh, thank you, Lord. So we're going to just dismiss with this one thing. And it is, uh, I love you, Dad. And when you say that, say it to your earthly father, whether they're here or whether they've already gone on or it doesn't matter, but also say it to your heavenly father. All right? So on the count of three, I love you, Dad. One, two, three. I love you, Dad. You are dismissed this morning.